Close your eyes. Watch your breath. Watch it all the way in. Watch it all the way out. Adjust your mind so it can stay with the breath. Adjust the breath so it can stay with the mind. In other words, you can try long breathing, short breathing, fast breathing, slow breathing, deep, shallow, heavy, light. Try to see what kind of breathing is just right for the body and the mind right now. But you also have to adjust your mind. If the mind is telling itself there are other things that are more important to do or other things that are more entertaining or it just doesn't want to do any work this morning, it's just lazy, you've got to change it. Because after all, the mind needs to be trained. You can't just let it follow its own instincts. Otherwise, it's like living in a house with an untrained animal. The animal will create all kinds of trouble for you, even though you say, well, I don't want to be harsh with the animal, I want to be nice to it. Still, the animal is going to take advantage of that, in the same way the mind takes advantage of you when you just let it go wherever it wants to go. Because the mind doesn't have a sense of just right, and this is what we're trying to develop as we meditate, is a sense of just right. In Thai they have a phrase, tam jai, which basically means to work on your mind. We live in a world where often, too often the world seems too small, the world seems too large. In other words, things aren't good enough for us, or they're so good we just can't get enough. We get really greedy for things. We have to adjust the mind so the mind is just right for the world, because after all, the world is the way it's going to be. This doesn't mean that you can't change it, but there are times when you do your best to change it, and as long as you stick in line with the precepts, it's perfectly fine. But the temp there's a temptation when the world isn't as good, good as you like it to be, and you're willing to break the precepts in order to make it what you want it to be. And that's when the mind is getting out of, out of bounds. It's either getting too small or too large, so you've got to get it just right. So this is the best you can do, okay, be satisfied with that. Because the real work isn't with the world outside, the real work is working on your mind. As the Buddha said, the causes of suffering come from within. Things outside may be bad, that's, for, that's definitely true. That can happen all the time. But the reason the mind is suffering is because the mind has, hasn't really trained itself. If the mind is well trained, it can live in a world that's good or bad or whatever and not suffer. And if it's not trained, you can live in, in the best world possible and still not have enough. So you've got to train the mind so it's just right, not too large for the world, not too small for the world. Get it so it's just right. And this is how we do it. We work with the breath. Get the breath just right to begin with. Get the mind so it's just right with the breath. And you get a sense that, yes, the mind can be adjusted. You don't have to put up with whatever comes in. You can train it. And the more you train it, the more happiness it has. The idea that happiness comes from just doing whatever you want, you begin to realize that that's, that's really false. It's the mind lying to itself. Happiness comes from training the mind. So it knows what's right to do, what's not right to do, so it has a sense of just right. And when you develop that sense of just right, okay, then you can trust yourself a lot more. The mind is more trustworthy. It's the kind of mind you want to live in the house with, not the one you have to drive outside. It's not going to create any messes for you because it knows what to do, what's proper and what's not proper. It knows how to find its happiness in the right places. So this is something we should do every day, train the mind. Get it to settle down with one object and give it a sense of well-being with that object. And when you get that sense of well-being from inside, then the mind is a lot more willing to be trained. And it's a lot easier to see, to admit to itself where it's been wrong and how it can change. So the Buddha t taught all this for the sake of happiness. He taught noble truths about suffering, but the truths about suffering are there because he wants us to get past suffering so we can find a happiness that can live in a world, no matter what the world is like, and still be happy. And that's the kind of happiness we all want, the happiness that we can depend on.